two speakers from the same company, but very, very different. How different are they out? Well, one is gray, and one is like a pinky, reddish, quite, quite nice looking. But apart from that, of course, I'm joking. These are really, really interesting speakers because we have the Wonder Boom 2, something, a speaker that I have liked for a long time. No, it's not the most fantastic sounding speaker I have ever heard in the whole of my short life, but it's got a nice form factor and an okay sound, and it's really, really travel friendly. But now we have the massive, the massive upgrade we've all been waiting for. It's the Wonder Boom, can you guess? The Wonder Boom 2, it's the Wonder Boom 3. At a minimum, it's a 50% improvement because we've gone from a two to a three. Another way of looking at it is, it's one more. We've increased it by one, and it'll be the Wonder Boom 4, where we actually double uh, the improvements. So there you go. They may look the same on the table, but I'm gonna go over all the pluses and minuses between the two speakers. But it's the end of Christmas, and what happens at the end of Christmas? I have to put my balls away, so I thought I'd show you these are my balls, and you're never gonna see them again, at least for another year. So we've got the Wonder Boom 2, the Wonder Boom 3. I already said I really like the Wonder Boom 2, so this is really exciting. Look, it hasn't just come out. I'm behind on a load of things, including my uh, speaker reviews. It's been out, I think, since August. August, September, October, November, December, January. J not quite five months, because we're not at the end of January. It's about four, four months, four and a half months. And other people have reviewed it. They weren't. No, no, I'm not super, super excited, but I have to tell you, I have listed all the upgrades. You can decide, is this, is this Logitech? Is this Ultimate Ears? Of course, is Logitech. Is this them giving us a, a, an early Christmas present in August? Taking a speaker that was very, very well liked and making it even better, not just got really, really pretty colors now. So we only used to get 13 hours, and you may say 13, I would never say it's 13, because quite honestly, I think 13 is quite unlucky. But hey ho, not everybody is superstitious. They went for 13 hours, but we've now got, uh, uh, 20, we've now got 14 hours. That's an improvement of one, as indeed from going the two to the three, but one more hour. So they've probably, they've probably got a much bigger battery, isn't it, to go from 13 hours to 14 hours, how could they have possibly done it? I guess they could have tested it in a different way. It doesn't tell us how they've tested it. Of course, this is normally mixed use. What kind of tracks, blah, blah, blah. As I, I've said it many times, I'll say it again, the, the most ridiculous spec is, in, is battery life. That's why I tell you all you need to know is how big is the actual battery capacity? Not in milliamp hours, you want to know in what hours. We know on the, uh, out on the Wonder Boom 2, it was indeed 8.14 watt hours. And do you know what it is on the Wonder Boom 3? It's now, I've got no idea because they're not telling us. <sighs> I've become quite shy on a lot, of, a lot of the specs. I'm going to assume that means it's the same battery. We've gone from, we've got one hour more battery life. I'm gonna stick my neck out and say, because I can't see any teardowns, it's the same battery, which means different drivers? How else could they have done it? Well, they could have tested it different and they could have tuned it differently. If you remove some of the bass, you would of course get more battery life, stuff like that. If you, if you slant your testing to say 60% volume and then slant it to 50% volume, do you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get more battery life. So that's, that's one big major factor already. Uh, if you've got a Wonder Boom 2, you'll get another hour of battery life if indeed you listen to it exactly how they have tested it. Something I've been waiting for for a long time. It now uses at least 31% of recycled plastics. Look, I've, I also watch all the wildlife programs and you've got these, uh, not tortoises, tortoises don't live in the sea, but the thing, not terrapins either. You know, the other things that look like tortoises but swim and they've got straws in the nose, it's not funny. You, you know, the fish are getting covered in nets. We know plastics in the sea is a major, major issue. I do not want to belittle it at all, however. I don't think anybody, anybody is going to buy this because it's now got 31%. Not 100% or 50%, 31% of these are now, now recycled plastics. That's good, but hey, not only would I not buy it in the first place for that reason, I wouldn't upgrade for that reason, but hey, 
Greta, whatever her name is, would probably upgrade if she had for that, and that's fine. I'm not going to knock anybody who wants to uh, know things, that wants to enjoy the environment for years and years to come in the same way as we had it previously, but I'm reviewing Bluetooth speakers, and I say well, that doesn't mean anything to me. The Bluetooth range has gone from 40 meters, 131 feet. No, it hasn't. It's gone from 30 meters, 98.4 feet to a possible 40 meters, 131 feet. Got to remember, in their, in their uh, ideal testing scenario. But how have they done that? Well, I assume it's because it's gone from Bluetooth 5 to Bluetooth 5.2. So there's another, another massive upgrade of 0.2, Bluetooth 5 to Bluetooth 5.2. That means we're going to get fantastic latency now. But hang on a second, when Alan Ross tested his latency, I have to tell you, in my it's very user scenario specific and platform specific. On my Android, on my Samsung Plus 10, yes, I keep saying I'm going to upgrade, I haven't upgraded it yet. 135 milliseconds for YouTube versus 80 milliseconds streaming YouTube. That's a downgrade. I, I didn't get, I, I didn't get any improvement in my user scenario on my Android. And some of the other improvements are, well, that's it on paper. The, the, we're going to hope that we've got a massive, also any any upgrade. Let's hope they've changed the drivers. It's going to sound that much sweeter, that much more base extension, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to first of all show you when I did the frequency response measurements on axis. Remember, on axis, we've got passive radiator, passive radiator, uh, left driver, right drive, right driver, left driver. So on axis is not on axis to the full range drivers. And these are my on axis measurements. I have to tell you though, when I did measure it from the side, wasn't much difference. So these are pretty much the frequency response from front and side. Default indoor mode, Wonder Boom 2, Wonder Boom 3. At first look, you're thinking, oh, I've got loads more bass. We look at the 90 Hertz peak there. Certainly looks like Wonder Boom 3 has got more bass now. But that's not the whole story. If you look closely, there's a slight difference in volume levels. And the tuning, we've certainly got more at the high end now on default mode, we seem to have less in the mids. What about the outdoor mode? Wonder Boom 2, Wonder Boom 3, again, at first glance, there's a bit more bass. But if you look closely, you'll see the tuning is different. The volume levels are slightly different. And indeed, by the time you hit maximum volume, which is where we really see what the real headroom is, if you look very closely, the bass is now the same but the tuning's slightly different. Default mode, 60% volume. If we overlay them, you can see how the mids are stronger on the Wonder Boom 2, but the highs are more prominent now on the Wonder Boom 3. And while it looks like we've got more bass in terms of 90 hertz, you can see we've got less in terms of upper bass. It appears to be a, di a different tuning. There's no free lunch here. Outdoor mode, again, same story. Overall, the outdoor mode on Wonder Boom 3, you can see is playing louder. So when you're leveling to your ears, that bass is not gonna sound like more bass, but it will, if you're playing at the same volume, you're gonna think that's going louder. And as I already showed you, maximum volume, the headroom is exactly the same. Then they've changed the drivers. Um, and, and of course, all drivers are gonna fluctuate a little bit in their specs. Anyway, that's, uh, that's just how it is in the world of electronics. That there's tolerances on all these things. However, that looks like it does sound different, but it's been retuned. They've just retuned it. They could have given us a firmware upgrade, uh, you know, using their silly tool, because there's no app for this thing. Uh, we could have used the media tools. I don't know how, how they do their upgrades. They've retuned it. Does it sound, does it look like it, it sounds better? Mm, it just sound, looks like it sounds, might be a matter of taste because we've got, we've dropped some upper bass in favor of deeper bass. I personally prefer that sort of thing. Uh, but they've also dropped the mids and they've raised the highs. So it's gonna sound different, isn't it? And the outdoor mode looks as though it goes a bit louder, but it, this is about, you know, this is about tuning. This is not about an upgrade on the on the UE Boom 2. Only one thing left to do then, we'll have a listen in the real world. You gotta remember measurement mics. You have a single measurement mic when you do all this. It's an Omni mic and is not the same as when we record it uh, to try and simulate what our ears do, which are uh, on average 17 centimeters apart and slightly angled out. It's quite different in the real world. So have a listen to their default mode. There is two modes. If you press the, the tree looking thing on the bottom, of course you'd have to turn it on first. 
and then go boom, and then and all that. And then we turn that on, and that means it's outdoor mode. Because you, you've got to turn it around to do that. I said this on my last review about the, uh, the Rocksteady stuff. Got controls on the top. Why not have all the controls on the top? I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just easy to design it that way. Just seems weird to me. So, two modes, indoor, outdoor. Outdoor, of course, is going to be the louder mode. Let's have a listen, indoors. <laughs> Sound better? It does to me. It may not sound better to you. It's simply different tuning. It's not like something magical has happened that's now got a 20 foot uh, sound stage versus a 5 foot sound stage and now hearing details you don't know. The tuning's a bit different. Do I prefer it? I do. Um, obviously on a longer listen you're going to pick up the smaller differences more. On a longer listen I, I significantly like the Wonder, Broom, the Wonder Boom 3 more. But I've just retuned it. The idea that you'd have to buy a whole new speaker to get the new tuning is ridiculous when it could have been a firmware upgrade, of course. Um, that's the default mode, and that's the indoor mode. I call it indoor mode because the other mode is called the outdoor mode. Let's have a listen to the outdoor mode. So in the real world, there's a slight increase in deep bass, not real deep bass, let's say mid bass for the Wonder Boom 3, but at the cost of upper bass and the tuning's just different. We've got less mids, that again will make it sound a bit more bass heavy and a bit more in the highs, so it's a bit more V-shaped. Outdoor mode in the real world, well there's no difference in the actual bass, but it's playing louder. It's more upper mids, more in the highs, it's louder. It seems to be tuned on the Wonder Room 3 to go louder. The outdoor mode, let's face it, is a mode you're only gonna use outdoor, blah, 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 but maybe not even then. Do you know why? Because it's horrible. It's a screech fest. They're just giving you piercing highs. It's only a little speaker. It's not like they've got low, you know, loads of headroom to play with to, to really have an, a decent tuning outdoors. Remember, these out, so-called outdoor tuning is not about reproducing what you would do indoors. It's just about going louder. Do you know why? Because over the years, recently, outdoor mode has become cutting the deeper bass, increasing 
the highs. So it's a bit more piercing, it goes loud. That's the opposite. That's the opposite of what you, what you do if you wanted to tune it uh, outdoors to sound indoors. You've got to remember, in, indoor room response means you lose some of the highs compared to an anechoic chamber, and you can get a gain in the deeper bass. If you wanted a true outdoor mode, it would mirror that outdoors, but then of course you'd lose volume. So outdoor mode, I might as well just say high volume mode, high volume screech mode, that's what it is. So there you go, it's a bit, it's more V-shaped now uh, of in default mode. I like it, for me that works. But of course you could, you could, you could EQ your, <laughs> that's that one, Wonder Boom 3. You could EQ your Wonder Boom 2 that way anyway. It's just a shame though, they, this is not uh, app friendly. Well, it wasn't when I checked, maybe I've made a fantastic, huge uh, error, but as far as I know, no app support. Otherwise we could have tweaked it to exactly the same in the app and maybe that's, that's why they ain't giving us app support. Um, so there you go, it's just been retuned. All we need to know is, this is the thing about why maximum volume is not, testing for me is the most interesting. Not because I want to see how loud it goes, it's because it gives you the ultimate headroom. Remember, maximum volume is all about fighting distortion. Some will allow you to have more distortion now than other companies, but they'll all distort at maximum volume, well, even before that, but you get worse distortion and more dangerous distortion at maximum volume. And it, remember, it's got internal limiters to, to limit how, you know, any damage. That's the true headroom. That tells you how, how much headroom there is to play with at lower volumes. And that's gonna tell us if it truly is got more headroom or it's just been retuned. Maximum volume test. <laughs>
that's really where we are with this. It should have been like the Wonder Boom 2.5, or it should have been a firmware upgrade. I mean, literally, the difference is now, it's a, it's a newer Bluetooth version. They're playing fast and loose with telling you there's more battery life. You know why there's more battery life? They've retuned it. So where are we in the retune? It's a bit more, a bit more V-shaped. You've got a bit more bass extension, but you're losing upper bass. Um, I assume this, this kind of, they, I'm, I'm assuming, first of all, they're measuring it in default mode, where it's slightly, a tiny bit less volume. It's gonna get more battery life. Outdoor mode, it does go louder. So they've retuned it in both modes, but at a cost, the outdoor mode now is even, is an, even less uh, of that deeper bass. Not that you're gonna hear it anyway. There's no deep bass. It's, just get this right, you've got mid bass and upper bass. You've got no real deep bass. It's completely rolled off. And you wouldn't really expect that unless we get a nice wireless sub. One day we'll have wireless subwoofers, I guess, with all our Bluetooth speakers will be in, in absolute heaven and every speaker will be the holy grail. But it hasn't happened yet. Uh, I guess there's just not enough money uh, in Bluetooth speakers. But I prefer the tuning. There's no real headroom. It does go louder in outdoor mode. So you've got another decibel of loudness outdoor, but you've got another decibel of screech. I mean, if that's a deal breaker for you, then, then you're sorted, aren't you? So that, that's basically it. I mean, I've, we'll, go, we'll go over the entire specs. We've already talk, told you what the difference is. You never guess where they're made. They're made in China. Uh, it's still the same price, no matter which one you buy. It does fluctuate a little bit, but it basically it seems to be 89 quid, 89 dollars, whether it's the Wonder Boom 2 or the Wonder Boom 3, basically Wonder Boom 3, because I guess it's the same speaker. It's three years on, by the way. It came out in June 2019. Same battery, co SBC code, of course. You can. Uh, play them both in stereo or party mode. You can set them up in either either way, but you can't pair them to each other. They're not backward compatible. So the Wonder Boom 3 will only play in stereo or party mode with another Wonder Boom 3. If you've got another one, but Wonder Boom 2, that's another reason why it's pointless upgrading. You couldn't uh, pair the two together because there's no no USB-C. I know this is the, uh, the, the, the unbelievable thing. It's because it's not upgraded, is it? They've got a new Bluetooth chip in it, uh, apparently. And they thought that was worth calling it. I don't. But do you know what it is? It's micro, micro USB. There's no USB C. There's no auxiliary input. You can't, you can't even use this to make phone calls. There's no mic. Um, I believe it's 18 watts on this speaker. The charges at five volts, two amps. They're both <laughs> exactly the same weight at 420 grams. One thing is nice about it. It does float. You drop it in a pool, in the water, in the sink, or wherever you happen to be, in the lake, in the river, in a pond. It'll float. It'll float upwards. So the actual drivers, full range drivers themselves, will be semi-submerged. But hey ho, you can do that, and that's why I think it's a great form factor. And I think eighty nine quid these days with the alternatives is a little bit. You, the only reason you'd buy that is for the form factor, uh, how travel friendly that is. There are much better options now at, at that and uh, cheaper price. It is two forty millimeter drivers and two passive radiators. Talk, I told you about the YouTube, it's actually got worse for me, and there's no app support. And that's been my overview of the Wonder Boom 2, upgraded to the Wonder Boom 3. I personally prefer the sound of it. For me, I'm well happy, but you'd have to justify another 89 quid, another 89 dollars for something you could do with a third party app. Anyway, just change the EQ. You, we know what the headroom is now, so you know how to mirror their own tuning. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again whenever it is in another video. I'm, uh, time is not my best friend at the moment, but I certainly want to carry on doing what I'm doing. I hope you carry on watching me. A lot of people watch me and actually <laughs> don't seem to uh, care less about what they're watching, but they carry on watching, which is fine. It still helps the algorithm. I say thank you. Thank you, trolls. Just, when you have time, you comment and tell me you don't watch. It helps the algorithm. I, don't know. I mean, maybe I give you guys uh, too much airtime instead of all the people who really are been there for years and remain there. And I, trust me, I know everybody, every single comment where you've bigged me up in some way, it does make a difference to me. It does motivate me. Remember, I don't think there's anybody doing Bluetooth speakers that makes a penny. There's no money in it. We do it for the love of it. I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching.